Good evening. My name is Ultramarine Vitriol, the fourth company of the Ultramarine's rank sergeant. Now this would normally be the time where you expect to see Mr. Stevetic ranting from his Casa de Stevetica. Unfortunately, due to illness, he cannot make it this evening. So instead, you have me. And today is an Ultramarine Reviews. And I will be doing my review on the recent release for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 of L.A. Noir. Now, you may be thinking, what does an Ultramarine fighting for the Emperor's glory in the 41st millennium have anything to do with L.A. Noir? Well, let me tell you, that game was the basis for our targeting systems. Now, you may not understand this, but if we ask someone, are you a heretic, and are you planning to undo the will of the Golden Throne, our visors will come up with a display. Y for lie, X for doubt, and A for truth. If it is a lie, we shall purge the heretic. If it is doubt, we will purge them to be on the safe side anyway. And if it's truth, well, we kill them so they can join the Emperor on his right side. Now, on to the review. L.A. Noir is a game that was released by Team Bondi a Sydney-based developer, and it was published by Rockstar. The game is set in 1940s Los Angeles, following the story of Cole Phelps, a decorated war veteran of Okinawa, namely the Battle of Sugarloaf Hill, and his quest as an LAPD detective to solve murders and that kind of stuff. Now, this game is good. You can tell by the look on my visor how good it is. It could be better. But let's talk about the good points first. The faces. The facial animation in this game is some of the best I have ever seen, and this has something to do with the 34 odd cameras they decided to film the actors' voice, uh, actors' faces with, while they read their lines. That is just purely amazing. The faces for a majority of the main characters almost look as if you had pulled them off the televisions themselves or as we call them in the 41st millennium, Vox viewers. Some of the lesser characters, their faces leave a little bit to be desired. And unfortunately, one of the game's antagonists looks like he's in a permanent state of constipation. That said though, the faces from me get a 9 out of 10. It would have been a perfect 10, save for the occasional look of constipation. Gameplay. This Ultramarine will add that the gameplay in this is both innovative and boring at the same time. Innovative because it is a great single player experience. It's very, very strongly story driven. And the interrogation techniques, while still in their infancy, are quite unique. I have never seen a game like this, not since some of the old live-action captured video games of the mid to late 90s that came across 12 discs and yet people complain of three and having to change them more on that later but that said this game in terms of standardized gameplay really brings nothing new to the table you get your mission you drive to a point in the mission do stuff, do some more driving, finish the mission, and then move on to the next mission. This has been a standard gameplay formula for these types of games for a long time, ever since the top-down version of Grand Theft Auto. And let me be honest with you, I would like to see some changes done in that area. 
Namely, maybe something a little bit different. I mean, you really can't change an unbroken formula, but you need to spice it up a bit. Make the driving more interesting. I know every now and again you'll throw in a street crime, but you can only do so many street crimes before you start to lose faith in humanity, which is something that we space marines never do. Never. Unless you're the heretics, then you will burn. Overall, gameplay gets a very solid 8 out of 10 from me. It's 8 out of 10 because it is innovative, it relies on a good working formula, but I would love to see something a little bit more done with it. The audio in this game is crisp and clear. Often you can hear patrons on the street talking about things about whether or not they want to be tight this evening. Tight being a term used in the 1940s for being drunk and in the 41st millennium, a term we use for hanging those who breach the Emperor's will with in referral to their nooses. Or the chain on my chainsword. Rome. The audio is also in tune very well in the car. While driving you will get to hear sports reports, you'll get to hear radio dramas, something I wish they would bring back because it would make the points where I can't get my helmet off all the more entertaining and they also do music. It is all very fitting for the scene and so Team Bondi gets a 10 out of 10 for audio. The acting as well in terms of voices is well done so extra props there. All I have to say is Cole Phelps badge 1247 don't you like my Vox impersonator? Last, but not least, we come to the overall quality of the game. This game has come a long way since being a text-based adventure which Team Bondi started out with. It has been developed into perhaps one of the most graphically innovative games of today. I wish there was a little bit more to do with the city while the cars look nice and the characters look nice, the motions are still, for the characters, a little bit robotic. Like me in Power Armor. And the city just leaves that little bit to be desired. On a next-gen system, I would expect the cities to be a little more lively. And not just with people. People put so much emphasis the great masses that populate their towns. But even then, the area that you're playing in has to look nice. And it doesn't just look nice. Nice is not good enough by the Emperor's will. I expect things to look great. And unfortunately, this city just looks nice. The gameplay mechanics, the controller responsitivity, that's right, I'm making up that word because I'm a sergeant. Can't you tell by my chainsaw? The responsivity is good. The character will do what I want, but mind you, when running, sometimes I get stuck. And because it's hard to play with a chainsaw and bolt pistol permanently attached to my hands, I must admit, sometimes I run into things. And the character's momentum will keep going, and then I will fail the chase. And that is just not on. But, mind you, I got used to this in Red Dead Redemption, so it is something that I can easily overcome, and a current stalwart of the quote-unquote sandbox genre. All in all, L.A. Noire is a strong single-player game, however, the replayability, unless you absolutely cock up some cases, can be rather low. There will be some DLC released, such as The Naked City, which you can get on release with Xbox 360, as well as some additional side missions. And for all you Chivo whores out there, they are well worth the while. All in all, this game by Team Bondi is worthwhile, and they must have at least for a short amount of time until the next big release, which in my opinion will be Duke Nukem Forever. For after all, it was his gene seed that helped to create the Primarchs. I give Elaine Onoir 
an 8.5 no even better a 9 out of 10 golden thrones thank you